In this lesson, we're going to go through the process of deploying a build of our app into Apple's App Store Connect platform, which is the platform that we as developers use to manage and distribute apps that we build for Apple's App Store. Now, I recommend that you have the bubble manual open while you're going through this because it does document every step that we're gonna go through here. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is to enroll in Apple's developer program. You'll need to do this to be able to log into Apple's App Store Connect, which is a platform that we're gonna use to manage and distribute our app for iOS. So you can follow the link to sign up to the developer program there, and then you'll want to log into App Store Connect, which I'm gonna do here myself. So I've created my Apple developer account. I'm going to go down and click on identifiers and I'm going to click to register a new app ID. It is an app ID type of identifier. It is an app, so I'm going to continue. So what we're actually registering here as an app ID is think of this like a unique ID for our application within Apple's ecosystem. So give this a simple description that lets you easily identify what it is about later on. So now we need to add this bundle ID and this is gonna form part of our overall app ID. And we're asked to follow a certain convention here, which is the reverse domain name style. And this is just a way of ensuring that people add in unique bundle IDs. We could start with com.wanderlog for our domain name and then our app name is also called Wonderlog, so I could do something like this. Or we know that we're actually hosting our app on wonderlog.digital, so I could do digital.wonderlog.wonderlog, or I could even have this last part be wonderlog.mobile. So then together, our app ID prefix and our bundle ID give us the app ID, something like follows. And now below are a list of capabilities that we can allow our app to have within the iOS environment. And at the time of recording, there's one specifically that we might want to do, which is push notifications. And you can always come back and set this up later, but since I know that we're gonna use push notifications, I'm just gonna tick this. And then I'm gonna hit continue. Now, just before you hit register, you'll want to copy your app ID here, which is also called here a team ID, and paste this within your mobile settings in Bubble. And then also grab your bundle ID and add this to the bundle ID field. And that's going to store all of those values ready for me to complete the process of registering this app ID, which I'm gonna do by clicking register here. So now we have an identifier for our app within Apple's ecosystem. The next step is to actually get a build of our app into Apple's App Store Connect. And we're gonna do that by setting up a connection between App Store Connect and Bubble. So we're going to go to our account page within our developer account and then go down to users and access under App Store Connect. We're then looking for the integration section and if it's your first time, you may need to request access in order to get access to the App Store Connect API, which Bubble is going to use to distribute a build into the App Store. Now, depending on whether you're working in a team or not, you may want to be generating a team API key or otherwise individuals on your team can create their own keys. I'm just gonna create a team key here. And this is the key that Bubble is going to use in order to generate and distribute a build of our app within App Store Connect. So I'm going to generate a new API key here. I'm going to give it a name. We need to give it the admin permission and we're gonna hit generate. Next, you want to download this key that you just created and you'll only be able to do this one time. Next, we're gonna go back into Bubble under our mobile settings. Now that you've downloaded this API key, you can upload it here where it says private key. And then if you go back into App Store Connect, you have a key ID here for the key that we created. Copy that and place that 
in this input and then grab the issuer ID and paste that in this input. Our next step is to go to this URL here because we need to generate here what we call an app within the context of App Store Connect. And this app that we're gonna build is gonna contain everything to do with our listing on the App Store, including our app's description, screenshots, and ability to add test users. So let's go ahead and create a new app here. So we're gonna choose here our platform, the name of our app, the primary language of our app. We're going to connect that bundle ID that we created earlier to this app listing. And finally, a SKU. So this is a unique identifier for this app listing. We can use that bundle ID that we created earlier. And depending on whether you have other team members in your App Store Connect account where you want to limit access, you'll either select limited access or full access for who will have access to this app within App Store Connect. So we're gonna hit create here. So we now have a draft app listing within App Store Connect. And eventually we're going to need to add a whole bunch of metadata here for our app listing. However, before we do that, we should go over to this test flight section. And this is where we are going to manage our ability to test our app on our own device and also invite other people to test the app on their devices. And now that we've added all of this information, we can actually hit this deploy button. And when you deploy, you have the choice of deploying your web version or your web and mobile version together. So that's the one that I'm gonna choose here. We're getting a message saying that we haven't added our Android settings, which of course makes sense because that's true. We're gonna be doing that in subsequent lessons. This description, I can say a quick word about what this deployment corresponds to. So I could say initial internal deployment. And then the type of build, we are gonna be talking more about the different build types as well as versions in a standalone video, which I'll link to in the description for this one. But in short, what this is gonna do is it's going to generate a new build package of our application and send it off to App Store Connect. And as far as the release type, we've got a choice here of releasing this as a major, minor, or patch type of release. So I'm gonna be covering this in more detail in a future video, but I am just gonna keep this as a minor release right now. I'm gonna save my version one, where that first digit is a one, for my first public release. This is just going to be a build that I am going to test internally. So I'm gonna start here with basically version 0.1.0. And I'm gonna hit deploy. And you can see that we got the success message. So now it's just a matter of waiting some time for the mobile app build to be complete. Now, if Bubble fails to create a build for your app for whatever reason, then you will get an email from them. You can simply try again. Sometimes these do fail for technical reasons outside of our control. But if you keep getting these errors, you'll get a support code here that you can pass on to bubble support. I'll leave a link to some resources in the description for this video with more information on how to handle this situation. In my case, I did have the build fail, so I am going to redeploy here. We've got to make sure that we are still doing this as a new build, and I can say this, rebuild after error. And we have to remember that at the time of recording, Bubble's mobile builder is still in beta, so these kind of build errors can happen but I am just going to create a new minor build here and hit deploy. And I'm gonna wait now until I get the email from Bubble telling me the status of my build. So it's been about 20, 30 minutes and I've just received an email from Bubble that my build has completed. I've also got an email from App Store Connect telling me that the build has been successfully added into my App Store Connect account. And then the last thing that I need to do is within my app, within App Store Connect, 
if I come down to this build section here, I can click add build and I'm going to select here the build that Bubble has just pushed or deployed into App Store Connect. So remember this build is a package of my app at a particular moment in time. Bubble has created this and Bubble has made this available to App Store Connect. All I'm doing now is I am mapping or connecting this particular build to my app listing here within App Store Connect. And then inside of our mobile settings page within Bubble, we can also see some information about the build that we submitted, as well as the description that we gave. In my case, my first build actually had an error. So I rebuilt the app with a second note. And you can see here that my version number also reflects the fact that I've done two builds here. And now we're ready to start testing our app using Apple's test flight environment, which we're going to set up in the next lesson.